Hello, the best. Welcome to the Warhammer 40,000 lore series, where we'll explore this rich and expansive universe. Join me in journey through the grim darkness of the far future, diving into the lore, history, and characters that make up this dystopian, sci-fi world. In this series, we'll cover the different media available for experiencing the 40K lore, including books, games, and miniatures. We'll also provide beginner-friendly titles, resources for finding local communities and events, and offer recommendations for essential media. In upcoming episodes, we'll delve into the history of the universe, the factions that make up the universe, and the themes and motifs that run throughout, exploring the concepts of war, sacrifice, and humanity's struggle against overwhelming odds. But this series isn't just about my own opinion, I want to hear from you too. Share your thoughts, questions, and theories about the Warhammer 40k universe in the comments section. Buckle up for an adventure through the dark and dangerous universe of Warhammer 40,000. Before we dive into the specific details of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, it's important to understand its origins in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. The Warhammer Fantasy Universe is a medieval-inspired world of magic and monsters, with various races and factions vying for power and survival. This universe features high fantasy elements such as dragons, wizards, and knights, and is set in a world that is at once familiar and fantastical. In Warhammer Fantasy, we see a strong influence from Tolkien-esque high fantasy with its epic battles between good and evil, magical creatures, and richly detailed world-building. The Warhammer 40,000 universe, on the other hand, is a sci-fi universe set in a dystopian future of spacefaring civilizations and cosmic horror. It is a universe where humanity has expanded across the galaxy, but at a terrible cost. The galaxy is a dangerous and hostile place, with countless alien races, dangerous warp entities, and corrupting influences threatening humanity's survival. This universe is characterized by its grimdark tone, with themes of war, loss, and sacrifice prevalent throughout. The grimdark themes of the setting are reflected in the gritty, industrial design of the space marines, the massive, hulking tanks and vehicles, and the dark, brooding architecture of the Imperium. At the same time, the sci-fi elements allow for a wide range of imaginative and fantastical concepts, from the psychic powers of the psychers to the horrific mutations of the chaos forces. Despite their differences in tone and setting, the two universes share many common elements, including a deep lore, intricate worldbuilding, and a focus on factional warfare and strategic gameplay. Both universes offer a rich tapestry of characters, factions, and events that make for a compelling and immersive storytelling experience. In Warhammer Fantasy, the lore primarily centers around the conflict between various races and armies, each with their own unique history and characteristics. These include the noble and chivalrous Britannians, the wise and enigmatic High Elves, the cunning and ruthless Skaven, and the hordes of undead led by the powerful Necromancers. In contrast, Warhammer 40,000 is a sci-fi universe set in the distant future where humanity is beset by enemies on all sides. The major factions include the Imperium of Man, a vast and authoritarian human empire, the forces of chaos, malevolent entities seeking to corrupt and destroy all life, and the Xenos, a diverse collection of alien races ranging from the ancient and enigmatic Eldar to the brutal and warlike orcs. Exploring the unique characteristics and motivations of each faction is a key part of understanding the Warhammer 40k lore, and we'll be delving into each of them in more detail throughout this series. Both the Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000 universes have been adapted into a variety of media, including novels, comics, video games, and even movies. Each medium offers a unique way of experiencing the lore and characters of these universes, and they differ in style and tone between the two universes. For example, the Warhammer universe has been primarily explored through tabletop games, with the original Warhammer Fantasy battle game being the foundation of the setting. The lore of Warhammer has also been fleshed out through novels, comics, and audio dramas, which often feature a more lighthearted and fantastical tone than the grimdark world of Warhammer 40,000. On the other hand, the Warhammer 40,000 universe has been primarily explored through novels, with over 200 novels and anthologies published to date. 
these books offer a deep and immersive look at the characters, factions, and conflicts of the 40K universe with a focus on the struggle for survival in a harsh and unforgiving galaxy. Video games are also a popular medium for exploring the 40K universe with titles ranging from real-time strategy games to first-person shooters. You can see the best of them later in these videos on my channel. Add them to the watch queue. Overall, each medium and adaptation offers a unique perspective on these two universes, and they all contribute to the rich and expansive lore that has captivated fans for decades. In the early 1980s, Games Workshop was primarily known for producing board games and miniature war games. The company had already released several games, including a post-apocalyptic vehicle combat game called Dark Future, a fantasy-themed board game called Chaosium, and a medieval-themed miniatures war game called Warhammer, later renamed Warhammer Fantasy Battle. While the original Warhammer game was relatively simplistic in terms of its lore and setting, it proved to be popular with players, who enjoyed the strategic gameplay and the opportunity to paint and collect miniatures. In 1983, Games Workshop decided to expand and develop the Warhammer setting, hiring a team of writers, artists, and game designers to flesh out the world and create a more immersive experience for players. The development of Warhammer Fantasy Battle in the 1980s was largely driven by a handful of key individuals, including Rick Priestley, who created the original rules and game mechanics, Brian Ansell, who oversaw the production of miniatures, and various writers and artists who contributed to the lore and backstory of the setting. The team drew inspiration from a variety of sources, including medieval European history, mythology, and literature. They created a fictional world called the Old World, which was loosely based on Europe during the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance. The Old World was populated by various races and factions, including humans, elves, dwarves, orcs, goblins, and chaos warriors, each with their own unique cultures, beliefs, and motivations. As the setting grew and developed, Games Workshop released a series of rulebooks and army lists that added new units, characters, and factions to the game. The lore of the setting was also conveyed through various media, including novels, comics, and sourcebooks, which added depth and richness to the world and its characters. Over time, Warhammer Fantasy Battle became one of Games Workshop's flagship products, alongside other tabletop games like Space Hulk and Blood Bowl. The success of the game established Games Workshop as a major player in the tabletop gaming industry and paved the way for the development of other related properties, including Warhammer 40,000, which was introduced in the late 1980s. As Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy Battle game grew in popularity throughout the 1980s, the company began to explore the possibility of creating a science fiction counterpart to the game. The team behind Warhammer Fantasy Battle had already created a rich and detailed world, drawing inspiration from medieval European history and folklore. But they recognized that there was a growing interest in science fiction and space-themed media and saw an opportunity to expand their audience. To create the new game, Games Workshop assembled a team of writers, artists, and game designers, including Rick Priestley, who had worked on the original Warhammer game. The team drew inspiration from a wide range of science fiction sources, including movies like Alien and Blade Runner, as well as classic science fiction literature and television shows. The team initially experimented with a number of different settings and concepts. One of the earliest ideas was a game set in a post-apocalyptic world, where rival factions battled for control of scarce resources. However, the company's founders, Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson, were interested in exploring other genres and settings for their games. In particular, they were drawn to science fiction and the futuristic settings popularized in books, films, and television shows. To this end, Games Workshop began developing a science fiction counterpart to Warhammer in the late 1980s. The goal was to create a new tabletop war game that would appeal to fans of science fiction and space opera while also retaining the strategic gameplay and customization options that had made Warhammer Fantasy Battle so successful. The initial concept for the game drew heavily on the Warhammer Fantasy Battle setting, featuring a galaxy-spanning Imperium ruled by a powerful Emperor surrounded by hostile alien races and demonic forces. 
However, the new game would have its own distinct aesthetic and lore, drawing inspiration from a wide range of sources, including classic science fiction literature, films, and comics. In 1987, the first edition of Warhammer 40,000 was released. The game featured a dark, dystopian vision of the future, with humanity on the brink of collapse and beset on all sides by enemies. Players could field armies of miniature models representing soldiers, tanks, aircraft, and other units from various factions within the 40K universe, including the Human Imperium, the Alien Orcs, the technologically advanced Eldar, and the terrifying Tyranids. The game's rules were designed to be easy to learn but difficult to master with a focus on strategic movement, positioning, and combat. Players would take turns moving their units, rolling dice to determine the outcome of attacks and other actions, and attempting to achieve various objectives, such as capturing enemy territory or destroying key units. The Warhammer 40,000 setting is heavily influenced by a wide range of science fiction and fantasy literature as well as other sources of popular culture. Some of the most notable inspirations for the setting include Frank Herbert's Dune series, Robert A. Heinlein, Starship Troopers, and the works of Howard Lovecraft. Dune, in particular, has been cited as a major influence on the setting, with its themes of political intrigue, religious fanaticism, and epic conflicts between rival factions. The Imperium of Man, the primary human faction in Warhammer 40,000, bears many similarities to the feudal society of the Imperium in Dune, including a powerful emperor, a complex hierarchy of noble houses, and a reliance on strict control of resources and technology. Starship Troopers, on the other hand, has been cited as an influence on the militaristic and authoritarian elements of the setting. The Imperium of Man is an oppressive regime that enforces strict conformity and obedience to its laws and leaders and places a high value on military service and sacrifice. Lovecraft's influence can be seen in the dark and often horrifying elements of the setting, including the demonic forces of chaos and the otherworldly tyranids. Themes of cosmic horror, madness, and the unknown are also present in many of the stories and novels set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Other sources of inspiration for the setting include classic science fiction films and television shows such as Star Wars, Blade Runner, and the Alien franchise, as well as a variety of comics and other works of popular culture. The result is a rich and complex universe that draws on a wide range of influences and sources while also creating its own unique and compelling world. One of the defining features of the Warhammer 40,000 setting is its emphasis on what is known as grimdark themes. This term refers to a specific style of science fiction and fantasy that emphasizes dark and often brutal elements, such as decay, despair, and horror. In the case of Warhammer 40,000, this means that the setting is characterized by a decaying and oppressive future society known as the Imperium of Man. This society is plagued by corruption, decay, and political infighting, and is ruled over by a distant and uncaring emperor who is worshipped as a god by his subjects. At the same time, the setting is also marked by brutal and often bloody warfare between various factions, each of which is locked in an endless struggle for survival and dominance. This warfare is depicted in graphic detail with descriptions of horrific casualties, gruesome injuries, and other forms of violence. In addition to these themes, the Warhammer 40,000 setting also incorporates elements of cosmic horror with demonic forces of chaos threatening to destroy the Imperium from within and alien races such as the Tyranids posing an existential threat to humanity as a whole. These elements add to the overall sense of dread and hopelessness that characterizes the setting and help to create a sense of tension and danger that is rare in other forms of science fiction and fantasy. Together, these elements create a unique and compelling vision of a future that is both bleak and captivating, drawing in fans from around the world who are drawn to the setting's combination of visceral action, compelling storytelling, and grimdark atmosphere. Following the initial release of the Warhammer 40,000 tabletop wargame in 1987, Games Workshop has published numerous supplementary books, rulebooks, codices, and expansions. These materials have helped to flesh out the setting's history, characters, factions, and conflicts, and have allowed fans to explore the grimdark world of Warhammer 40,000 in even greater detail. 
the Warhammer 40,000 universe has expanded through a vast number of novels, graphic novels, and short stories published by Games Workshop and its Black Library in print, as well as independent publishers. These works explore different facets of the setting, including the early history of the Imperium, the rise of the Space Marines, the battles against Chaos, Tyranids, and other foes, and the struggles of individual characters and factions in the face of overwhelming odds. Additionally, the Warhammer 40,000 setting has been explored through numerous video games, including the popular Dawn of War series developed by Relic Entertainment and published by THQ and later Sega. These real-time strategy games allow players to command armies of soldiers, tanks, and other vehicles in epic battles across the galaxy. The series has received critical acclaim for its engaging gameplay, deep lore, and faithful adaptation of the Warhammer 40,000 setting. In recent years, the Warhammer 40K setting has also been expanded through a growing number of comics and graphic novels, with publishers such as Marvel and Boom Studios producing stories that explore the universe from new perspectives. These works have helped to introduce the setting to new audiences, while also providing longtime fans with new insights into the world of Warhammer 40,000. Overall, the expansion of the 40K setting has helped to make it one of the richest and most detailed universes in science fiction and fantasy, offering fans a wealth of stories, characters, and conflicts to explore and enjoy. Since its inception, Warhammer 40,000 has had a significant impact on popular culture, influencing countless works of science fiction, fantasy, and gaming. The setting's grimdark themes, intricate world-building, and iconic imagery have made it a favorite among fans of all ages and backgrounds. The franchise has also inspired a thriving community of fans who create their own artwork, stories, and games set within the universe. This has resulted in a wide range of fan-made content, from detailed miniature models to custom campaigns and scenarios for the tabletop game. In recent years, Warhammer 40,000 has gained even greater mainstream visibility with the release of several high-profile video games and the opening of dedicated stores and events around the world. The franchise has also been the subject of documentaries and other media highlighting the enduring popularity of the setting and its impact on popular culture. Despite its longevity, Warhammer 40K continues to evolve and grow with new stories, factions, and characters being introduced regularly. Its fanbase remains passionate and dedicated, ensuring that the grimdark future of Warhammer 40,000 will continue to captivate and inspire for years to come. The Warhammer 40K universe is vast and complex, with a wide variety of books and other media that explore its many facets. For fans looking to dive into the lore and backstory of the setting, there are several types of books available. Novels are one of the most popular formats for Warhammer 40,000 fiction, with dozens of titles covering a wide range of characters and factions. These books typically focus on the exploits of individual heroes or units, offering a more personal and immersive view of the universe. Novels also often explore specific aspects of the setting in greater detail, such as the politics of the Imperium or the psychology of chaos. Graphic novels and comics are another important type of book in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These books offer a visual and dynamic way to experience the setting with detailed artwork and action-packed storytelling. Many graphic novels also feature interconnected stories or arcs, providing a more serialized approach to the setting. Codexes are rulebooks for the Warhammer 40,000 tabletop game, providing detailed information on the units, factions, and lore of the setting. These books are a valuable resource for players and fans alike, offering insight into the game mechanics and strategies as well as the lore and backstory of the setting. Codexes often feature detailed artwork and background information on the armies and units of the game, making them a must-read for anyone interested in the tabletop game. Overall, the different types of books in the Warhammer 40,000 universe offer a range of perspectives and formats for exploring the setting. From novels to graphic novels to codexes, there are many ways for fans to immerse themselves in the rich and complex world of Warhammer 40,000. For those new to the Warhammer 40K universe, it can be daunting to know where to begin. Fortunately, there are several book series that offer a great introduction to the setting and are beginner-friendly. 
One of the most popular series for newcomers is the Horus Heresy, which explores the events leading up to the current state of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. This series is set in the distant past of the setting and features many of the iconic characters and factions that are still relevant today. The series is also notable for its epic scale and high stakes, making it an engaging and thrilling read. Another recommended series for beginners is the Eisenhorn Trilogy, which follows the adventures of an Imperial Inquisitor as he investigates and battles against heresy and corruption. This series is more focused on individual characters and their experiences within the setting, offering a more personal and immersive view of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. The series is also well written and engaging, with a strong emphasis on mystery and intrigue. Other beginner-friendly books include the Gaunt's Ghost series, which follows the exploits of a regiment of Imperial Guard soldiers, and the Syaphas Cain series, which offers a more humorous and lighthearted take on the setting. Both series are well written and accessible, making them great entry points into the Warhammer 40,000 universe. While there is no strict reading order for the Warhammer 40,000 universe, following a chronological order can provide a more cohesive and immersive experience for readers. Here is a suggested reading order to get the best chronological experience. Eisenhorn Trilogy, Ravener Trilogy, Horus Heresy series, starting with Horus Rising, The Beast Arises series, starting with I Am Slaughter, The Siege of Terra series, starting with The Solar War, War of the Beast, Dark Imperium. Reading the Eisenhorn Trilogy first will introduce readers to the setting and provide a good foundation for understanding the 40K universe. The Ravener Trilogy builds on this foundation and provides additional context for the setting. Next, the Horus Heresy series offers a deep dive into the history of the setting and explores the events that led to the current state of the galaxy. The Beast Arises series is set later in the timeline and offers a glimpse of the aftermath of the Horus Heresy. The Siege of Terra series is set during the climax of the Horus Heresy and offers a thrilling conclusion to this epic storyline. War of the Beast and Dark Imperium are set in the current timeline and provide an insight into the current state of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Of course, readers can choose to deviate from this reading order as they see fit. However, following this suggested order can provide a more comprehensive and satisfying reading experience. The Warhammer 40,000 universe has several types of games available, each with their own unique rules and gameplay. Here are some of the most popular types of games. Warhammer 40,000 this is the flagship tabletop wargame of the 40k universe, in which players assemble and paint armies of miniature models and then battle against each other on a tabletop battlefield using dice and rulebooks. The game is set in the grimdark future of the 41st millennium and allows players to create armies from a wide range of factions, including Space Marines, Orcs, Eldar, Chaos, and more. Kill Team this is a skirmish-level version of Warhammer 40,000, designed for smaller-scale battles with fewer models. Kill Team is played on a smaller tabletop than 40k and allows players to build specialized teams of models with unique abilities and equipment. Necromunda This is a gang-based skirmish game set in the underhive of a massive hive city on a polluted world. Players control gangs of models and compete for resources and territory while dealing with rival gangs, mutated creatures, and other hazards of the Underhive. Adeptus Titanicus This is a game of massive robot battles in which players control giant war machines called Titans and engage in epic duels on a tabletop battlefield. The game is set in the same universe as Warhammer 40,000 but focuses specifically on the Titans and their pilots. Space Hulk this is a board game set in the 40k universe in which players control squads of space marine terminators as they battle their way through a derelict spaceship infested with deadly aliens called Genestealers. Tabletop games require the use of specialized dice and measuring tools as well as a playing surface with terrain and other components to represent the battlefield. To build an army in Warhammer 40,000, players choose a faction and then select individual units to add to their army roster. Each unit has a point cost, and players must stay within a certain point limit to build a legal army. There are also rules governing the organization of an army, such as how many troops, elites, and other units can be included. 
During gameplay, players take turns moving their units, shooting at enemy models, and engaging in close combat. Each unit has various stats and abilities, such as weapon skill, strength, toughness, and saves that determine how effective they are in combat. Players must also consider terrain, line of sight, and other factors when moving and attacking. The objective of the game varies depending on the mission being played, but generally involves either destroying the opponent's army or completing specific objectives on the battlefield. Overall, Warhammer 40,000 and Kill Team offer players the chance to immerse themselves in the rich lore and epic battles of 40k universe while also challenging their strategic and tactical skills. Beginner-friendly armies in Warhammer 40k can vary depending on a player's preferred playstyle, but some of the most popular armies for beginners include the Space Marines and the Imperial Guard. The Space Marines are a highly versatile and adaptable army that is relatively easy to learn and play. They are the poster boys of Warhammer 40,000 and have a wide range of units that can be customized to suit a player's preferences. They are also a forgiving army to play, meaning that they can withstand some mistakes and still come out on top. The Imperial Guard, on the other hand, are a more straightforward army that emphasizes massed firepower and overwhelming numbers. They are also relatively easy to learn and play, making them a great choice for beginners who want a simple but effective army. Ultimately, the best way to choose a beginner-friendly army is to do some research and find one that fits your playstyle and preferences. When purchasing game materials, it's important to keep in mind that the cost can add up quickly, especially if you're building a large army or buying multiple books. To save money, consider purchasing used game materials or looking for deals and discounts online. Additionally, many local game stores and hobby shops offer discounts to regular customers, so it can be worth building a relationship with these retailers over time. There are various types of events available for players, ranging from intense tournaments to relaxed game nights. Tournaments are the ultimate test of skill and strategy, where players from all over gather to compete in a structured format. Multiple rounds of games are held over a weekend, and players fight to score the most points and come out on top. If you're looking for a more relaxed atmosphere, game nights are a great option. Hosted by local game stores, game nights are an opportunity to enjoy a few games of Warhammer 40k with other players in a casual setting. It's a perfect way to make new friends and familiarize yourself with the game. For those interested in the hobby aspect of, painting sessions provide a fantastic opportunity to learn new techniques, receive feedback on your work, and socialize with other hobbyists. Narrative events are games that focus on storytelling rather than just winning. These events often have specific scenarios and objectives that players must complete to progress the story. It's a great way to immerse yourself in the world of 40k and have fun with friends. Campaigns are events where players participate in a long-term series of games that are linked together with the results of each game impacting the overall story. It's a perfect way to get more involved in the game and see how your choices affect the narrative. Overall, there's something for everyone in the Warhammer 40k event world, whether you're looking for intense competition or a more relaxed setting. Joining a community of players can be incredibly beneficial for several reasons. Firstly, you'll have the opportunity to learn from experienced players who can teach you the ins and outs of the game. This can help you improve your own skills and become a better player overall. In addition to learning from others, joining a community can also help you make new friends who share your interests. You'll have the chance to meet other players who are just as passionate about the game as you are and build relationships that extend beyond the gaming table. Another benefit of joining a community is that you'll often have access to exclusive events and materials. Many communities host their own tournaments, game nights, and other events that are only open to members. You may also have the opportunity to purchase exclusive miniatures, rulebooks, and other materials that aren't available elsewhere. Overall, joining a community is a great way to get more involved in the Warhammer 40,000 universe and meet new people who share your interests. Whether you're a seasoned player or just starting out, there's a community out there for you. Remember, finding a local community is a great way to enhance your Warhammer 40,000 experience, so don't be afraid to reach out and get involved. That wraps up our discussion on getting started with Warhammer 40,000. I hope this episode has been helpful in introducing you to the rich and immersive world of 40k. 
In the next episode, we'll be diving into the history of the universe with a timeline of key events and milestones. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to watch one of these cool videos and I'll see you next time.